let's return to this idea that we want to be able to calculate equilibrium concentrations from initial concentrations. We've seen how to write equilibrium expressions given a balanced chemical equation, and that's the first step. The next step is predicting the direction of reaction progress using the value of the equilibrium constant and a new concept called the reaction quotient Q. So with an expression for Kc in hand, the next step is to determine whether the reaction will go forward or backward. That is to say, given our initial conditions, which side of the point of chemical equilibrium are we on? Are we in a situation where we don't have enough products somewhere on the reactant side such that the reaction will move forward? Or are we in a situation where the initial conditions have too many product molecules such that the reaction will spontaneously move backwards toward an equilibrium state? So in a bulk sense, we want to know which direction will the reaction go. A better way to think about this, and one that brings in our microscopic picture from last time, is which reaction rate, forward or reverse, will be faster. If we're on the reactant side, then the forward reaction rate will be faster than the reverse reaction rate. But if we're on the product side, then the reverse reaction rate will be for faster than the forward reaction rate. We can use z, the number of reaction events, also known as x in our case, to characterize reaction progress, but there's a more convenient measure for problems like this. You can imagine if we're given concentrations, it's a little bit difficult to figure out the number of reaction events, especially if the stoichiometry is weird, if the stoichiometric coefficients are not equal to one. Instead of working with reaction events, we can work with what's called the reaction quotient, Q. Q is conceptually very simple. We take the form of the equilibrium expression, and we simply relax the requirement that those concentrations have to be at equilibrium. Q is the value of the equilibrium expression under any conditions, equilibrium or non-equilibrium. The beautiful thing about Q is that its value relative to K tells us which side of the equilibrium we're on at, at a particular state, which is usually the initial state that we're interested in. So, for example, if we calculate Q, and Q is greater than the value of Kc, then we know we're somewhere on the product side of the equilibrium such that the reaction will move in reverse. The rate of the reverse reaction will be faster than the rate of the forward reaction until we reach a point of chemical equilibrium. If, on the other hand, we calculate Q and Q is less than K, then the reaction will spontaneously move forward. The rate of the forward reaction will be greater than the rate of the reverse reaction. If we calculate Q and Q is equal to K, we can immediately stop and say, look, we're already in an equilibrium state. So the reaction will, on the whole, go neither forward nor backward. We're already in equilibrium. So if Q is greater than K, that means there are more product molecules. The numerator of the equilibrium expression is too high. There are more product molecules present than there would be at equilibrium. So the reverse reaction will occur more rapidly when Q is greater than K. That, in fact, causes Q to decrease until it reaches the level of K at which point macroscopic chemical change ceases. If Q is equal to K, that's when you do your happy dance, because the reaction is already at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, that means that the numerator of the equilibrium expression is too small. There are fewer product molecules present than there would be at equilibrium, and so the forward reaction will occur more rapidly than the reverse reaction. This causes an increase in the value of Q. It causes bulk production of the products and consumption of the reactants. Q will continue to increase until it reaches the level of K, at which point bulk chemical change will stop. And if you think about the way we typically run chemical reactions, this is the typical situation at the start of a chemical reaction. Q is zero because we don't have any products present. Our goal is to create products and we mix pure reactants to do that. It may not make a lot of sense that we'll have to deal with situations where, say, there's some product already present, but as we'll see in applications of equilibrium, there are some circumstances under which you can't really control what's in your reaction solution in the initial state. For example, when you're working with water, there's a guarantee that there's going to be some initial amount of hydroxide in there. You can't control the self-ionization of water. There's always going to be OH- in there, and that can influence where you are in relation to the equilibrium state of, for example, an acid-base reaction. But in any case, typically we start with zero products, and so typically Q equals zero to start.